Central Europe, Northern Lower Saxony. Preparations for the swarming period in a skep apiary. At the beginning of May, food supplies for the bees of the cultivated heathland area are low. The beekeepers living here do their best to tide their stocks over this period by migrating to regions of higher nectar flow and pollen yield. The skep colonies belonging to Georg Klindvort, master beekeeper from Zittensen, were taken to the Alter Land near Hamburg on their spring migration. In the extensive fruit growing region, the bees were able to gather a rich harvest of nectar and pollen for several weeks on end, and the stocks developed vigorously. After being transported back home to the large outstands, the stocks must be supplied with food by the beekeeper so that their development does not slow down before the impending advent of the swarming season. Sugar solution is readily accepted by the bees. The beekeeper replenishes the feeding dishes underneath the skep several times a week. In several of the skeps, the combs have already been built down as far as the dish. The bees are busy feeding their brood. The strength of this stock indicates that it will soon be ready to swarm. During the winter months, the beekeeper had already started extensive preparations for the time when his approximately 700 stocks will swarm. At Klindvort's farm, most of the beekeeping equipment is stored in the loft for the best part of the year. For example, the swarm catching bags are hung up to air. The wooden spiles for the skeps are also kept up here. Georg Klindvort inspects his working equipment piece by piece. In the barn, he checks the swarm catching bags fetched from the loft. These one and a half meter long tubes of gauze or curtain netting, with their tip and corners reinforced in linen, have been sewn by the staff at the farmstead. Damaged netting is repaired on the spot by the master beekeeper. The swarm catching bag serves to catch the prime swarm when it leaves the skep out of the entrance. So the bag should not have any holes through which the bees might escape. In each case, the beekeeper makes sure that all four pins which attach the bag in front of the skep are firmly sewn on to the corners. In the adjacent workshop, before the swarming season, a large reserve of travelling boxes has been built up with a view to selling off the expected prime swarms. The joinery work is undertaken by the beekeepers August van Bargen and Ingo Lau, both on the staff of Klindwort's bee farm. The skeps are given special attention on the part of the beekeeper. He has to prepare hundreds of woven straw hives for the swarms. Here, he has laid out the ones in need of repair. He uses his pocket knife to remove loose patches of cow dung with which the skeps are coated and thereby uncovers the closely packed rolls of straw and reed strips from which the skeps are woven by the spiral roll method. Regular care and attention is essential to ensure the durability and stability of these so-called Luneburg type skeps.
a goose wing serves as a brush in such operations. Worn patches occur most frequently round the rim of the skep. It is not always possible to remove the defective wrapping down to the last piece. The replacement strips of reed have been soaked to make them pliable. Where larger sections of the edging roll have been broken off, the repair is more complicated. Straw has to be replaced as well. The rye straw used for this purpose originates from special crops grown without the aid of chemicals. Only short, sturdy straws are suitable for skep weaving. The knife and the awl are the chief tools used during such repair work. While the top of each new strip of reed is anchored in the roll, the beekeeper cuts the tail off clean after first pulling it tight. It is important for the lower rim of the skep to be absolutely even. Later it will form a tight seal where the skep rests on the stand. Many of the skeps used here are 80 to 100 years old. Skeps used to be made by the beekeepers themselves, but today it's no longer necessary to weave new ones. For a good number of years, Georg Klindvort has been able to buy up large reserves of skeps from abandoned bee farms. The side walls of the skeps exhibit only minor damage and it's often enough for the beekeeper to insert only a single clasp. Now the skep has been completely renovated. If the basket work of the skeps is sound, it only has to be cleared of wax residues left behind after the combs were broken out. In the dome of each skep, three strips of foundation comb are now attached. 
These 7 by 3 centimeter strips of wax cut out of old combs are fixed by the beekeeper with a mixture of hot wax and fur resin. They serve the bees as a base on which to orientate their new comb building. The skeppist offers the bees further assistance in their comb building in the shape of wooden rods or spiles cut from rosewood or buckthorn. Into each skep, he pushes six of these pointed spiles at regular intervals through the walls of the hive. The spiles are arranged in pairs and aligned at right angles to the foundation strips. The bees build all around the spiles and stick the combs to them. This gives the honeycombs the stability required to withstand frequent movements of the skep. Final work on the skeps takes place in the open air. It is carried out here by Georg Klintwort, son of the head beekeeper and himself a master beekeeper. To protect them against the weather, he plasters the skeps with a new outer covering. The most suitable material for this protective coating is cow dung collected on the fields in springtime. This material spreads easily and seals the skeps, adhering so closely to the basket work on drying that not even moisture can loosen it. Closing the entrance with dung prevents parasites from nesting in the skep while it is drying on the shelf in the stand. The beekeeper must reckon with several weeks of concentrated work before all the preparations for the swarming season at the end of May have been completed. <laughs>